There's been a lot of talk about the future of mining precious minerals from asteroids in outer space. Some say that this is a great idea because there might be less mining on Earth, which mining on Earth is detrimental to the environment as it requires a lot of resources, changes and pollutes the environment, among other issues. And others say asteroid mining is as dangerous as anything else. So if there are problems with mining in outer space, what are they? Let's discuss some of the conflicts with asteroid mining. Welcome to the Global Network. Please support us by clicking the like button and subscribing to our social media accounts to stay up to date with our content. If you want to go further, consider joining our organization by visiting our website, spaceforpeace.org. The first and most fundamental aspect of mining in outer space is the massive change that we've all seen in the recent decade. Outer space missions were originally led in nation states, but today they are led by corporations, specifically individual billionaires. The 1967 Outer Space Treaty says that, quote, outer space is not subject to national appropriation by claim of sovereignty, by means of use or occupation, or by any other means, end quote. So, nations cannot own a celestial body like an asteroid. And so this treaty refers to nations, but has no mention of private companies. This gives way for private companies to do whatever they wish. After all, the foundation of capitalism is individualism, which emphasizes the urge to act independent of any collective, community, or even nation. This mentality is the root of capitalism, and of space capitalism, and provides little to no accountability processes to be established for private corporations. If corporations and private individuals are leading the mining of outer space, it pushes the issue towards more privatization of space, which in turn will push for more privatization on Earth. If billionaires control the minerals from space, they will control it here on Earth, and this only leads to more inequality. The Outer Space Treaty declares space as, quote, the province of mankind, end quote, meaning that space should be the common heritage of all mankind, a global commons. When it becomes privatized, it then becomes a commodity. The foundation of capitalism is to find anything outside of the market and to bring it into the market to be bought and sold as a commodity. If land is not in the market, it must be seized and transformed into a commodity then sold on the market. If a mountain is not yet in the market, bring it into the market. And if space is not in the market, commodify it and sell it on the market. The space imperialists are in the process of transforming space into a commodity, and they are justifying their actions by saying that these resources from space will benefit all of humanity. In reality, space imperialism will serve the interests of a small number of capitalists while the overwhelming majority of humanity continues to suffer under poverty, structural violence, and the lack of access to resources. When capitalism extends into space, so will the issues we see with capitalism on Earth, the over-exploitation of precious resources, and the monopolizing of industries. Just think about it. On Earth, we've been told that capitalism, usually called entrepreneurship, will solve all our problems but literally half of the earth today is in poverty. With all the new tech that is being developed, promises to correct environmental destruction and alleviate poverty, nearly four billion people on the earth today will die prematurely due to poverty-stricken lives. So what minerals are being mined and why are they so important? For example, one mineral that will be searched for is palladium a mineral worth twice as much as gold. Palladium has been used in catalytic converters, a part of the exhaust system in cars, in order to reduce emissions. Many might not know, but many catalytic converters are being stolen in recent years due to high demand. The average converter may contain anywhere from 2 to 7 grams of palladium, which isn't much, but one gram of palladium could be worth up to $60. Precious minerals and asteroids in space may serve the same role as oil did on Earth, 
possibly extending geopolitical struggles into astropolitical conflicts. This all leads to the question, who holds these people accountable? Well, as of right now, this should be pretty obvious, no one. They love to claim that the market dictates all actions of these individuals, stating there is a huge demand for X, Y, and Z. But the question then becomes, how can these people be held accountable? New treaties and legislation is required in order to hold space imperialists accountable. This means that more action through the public sphere, more accountability from government, is necessary to intervene into the actions of corporations and billionaires. This requires more people to get involved, to become political, to build a stronger government in the interests of the people rather than in the interests of the capitalists and the imperialists. These new treaties and legislation need to target private companies, corporations, and mega billionaires to hold them accountable, limit their actions, and really tax the heck out of them for the benefit of the majority. After all, if the majority is calling for an action against the minority, isn't that democracy? Yet, the political leaders have done exactly the opposite, where they use their political power to serve the interests of a tiny group of billionaires over the interests of the majority. For example, President Obama passed the American Space Act in 2015. This act essentially allows for private ownership of space resources, but only applies to companies owned by U.S. citizens. The very first line of the act states, to permanently secure the United States as the preeminent spacefaring nation and for other purposes. This one line clearly goes against the 1967 Outer Space Treaty. The American Space Act also authorizes the president to facilitate the commercial exploration and utilization of space resources to meet national needs. And what exactly does national needs mean? According to the hundred years of history, national needs usually means needs of the elite and not the needs of the majority. So, if political leaders are paving the way for billionaires to colonize outer space and to serve their own interests in the name of national interests as well as in the name of all of humanity, these political leaders should be held responsible just as much as the space imperialists. We need activists groups of people, and grassroots organizations to begin to have discussions about what type of legislation and treaties should be required to hold these space billionaires accountable and the politicians that represent them. What needs to be updated is the 1967 Outer Space Treaty. We should ask questions like, how can the minerals being extracted from space benefit the majority of Earth's inhabitants? How can we fight the exploitative nature of space imperialism. These questions and much more are required for us to ask, to answer, and to organize our ideas into actions. We at the Global Network urge all of us and our organizations to include these questions into your discussions and to push for a future free from exploitation, oppression, and inequality. These billionaires do not serve the interests of humanity. They serve themselves, and themselves only. It's time to fight back.